Welcome to the San Antonio FC Fancast. My name is Royce. I'll be your co-host for the day. Along with me are four of uh, my um, best friends, worst friends, friends. We'll go with friends. Four of my friends. Uh, First, let me introduce to you Robert. Robert, former goalkeeper for St. Mary's University here in San Antonio. Robert, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. He's They don't call him the best in the business for nothing, folks. Uh, along with us, we have uh, MLS Matt. Matthew, how are you? Amazing, man. My teams are winning, so I, we're great. He, he says his teams are winning, yet we had another draw. <laughs> That's sus. You're suspect. Suspect. Well, no, I should say us to make my my kid cringe anytime I use his lingo. So I need to keep doing with that. Along with me uh, are is uh, Harry, my true co-host. Harry, Harry, how are you? Finding my mouse. Uh, <clears throat> that um, it's been an eventful week. Uh, we got some bracketology uh, scheduled done. Um, I just converted to the bad side of an iPhone, so that's been an adjustment. Hey! Everybody clap it up. I want hands together. Clap it up for Harry for joining the iPad. Uh, the iPad. There's that. Uh, for iOS, joining the iPad. The <laughs> iOS, whatever. iPad, iPhone, whatever. That, I've got both. I'm so. a dad. I can do that. I can do that. That's fine. It's fine. Oh, and, and if he mm-hmm. wants to be a, a smart butt and come in here and introduce himself without me introducing him, the actual professional on the pod, Jonathan Check. Jonathan, how are you? Doing all right. I technically don't think I'm a professional anymore since I don't get paid for my work, but I mean, I guess I was at one point. Um, I'm doing all right. Hopefully my, my nose behaves tonight because over the last few days, it's kind of oscillated between being really stuffed up and running uh, like a professional athlete. Yeah, I think we all have that cold. It's definitely going through my house, so I'm going through the same thing. And that's Jonathan Check with Bluish Moon um, publication. Check out his stuff. Check out his, Check stuff. Out his blog. It's it, it's probably the best that covers SAFC right now. So it's great. Um, I'm gonna Outside go with it. Us. I'm running. Yeah, well, I, no, I see no, what I did the there. I see uh, what I did there. Be, better than go us. Go check <laughs> out his blog. Got you. Totally unintentional. I'm sure. But I, I almost said something intended. about it. Yeah, pun yeah. intended. <laughs> pun unintended, but very much accepted. <laughs> no, it like what what are we talking about? Of course. So uh, like I said, it's a dad joke. I'm a dad. We're gonna go with dad jokes. Anyway, moving right along. First subject we're gonna cover here is gonna be the San Antonio FC alumni. Um we had a few games where alumni uh alumnus made appearances right alumnus alumni anyway. would be the plural alumni is plural right alumnus is the singular latin so weird anyway um over the weekend uh nathan made an appearance for uh portland timbers against the houston dynamo gross in a one nothing loss to the dynamo <laughs> um, according to stewart he our... got more minutes and then he would have destroyed yeah. uh, the, the dynamo but you're not wrong. Uh, according to Stuart, he had a lot of really good chances, made a lot of really good runs, and and looked real productive and really made a difference as a sub, just couldn't put the ball in it. Um, secondarily, okay. Big Sam, Sam Madinarin, um also made a substitute appearance, but for his team, St. Louis, City FC, um, they ended up drawing with the LA Galaxy 3-3, three to three, and he had an assist in that game. And he earned a last minute red. He was pretty much by himself, clear, controversial red with a chance. And uh, multiple LA Galaxy players tried to take him down. Finally, one did and got a red for his his work there. Um, along with Sam, uh, we had two in the Minnesota United uh, LAFC match. He had Dane St. Clair start as goalkeeper. And Tani Oluwashayi came in as a sub in a 2-0 win um, against LAFC. Really good result for Minnesota there. Uh, we also had uh, Sebastian Ibiaga start for FC Dallas in a 3-1 to loss to Vancouver. 
and probably the biggest appearance of the ball that we keep following and we're excited about. Jose Gallegos got the start in a 2-0 win against Helsingor. Uh, they are now 13 points clear of third for automatic promotion in the Superliga, and they are only two points below Ulburg, um, who's number one with 51 points. Um, I'm not sure how much longer they have in their season, but we'll see. What's up? It's splitting into... Uh, so they split uh, into the promotion side and the relegation approach, side, and then they'll right. play, I think it's 10 more matches. 10 matches, right. Yeah. Uh, They've done their 22, and now they get 10 now, and 10 in the promotion and 10 in the relegation. They're obviously in the promotion, and they just need to keep their head above water in that promotion to automatically be promoted up. Correct. They need to get between 55 and 60 points based on historical data. Uh, through, okay, through their and they're market. sitting at 49. So, or, or, Pardon me. Uh, actually add 10 to that. They got to get about 14 points to be free and clear okay. based on historical data, which okay, shouldn't so be an issue with, with they need 14 problems. points in 10 games. So they need to average one point, something they need to get a couple wins and draw the rest of them. If they get four win, if they, yeah, if they get four wins, Hey, in the clear, they're promoted. So we'll count those down. Uh, when we come back though, we will talk about the game. Great timing there, Harry. All right, and we're back. Um, and we get to talk about San Antonio FC's match uh, yesterday against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Um, and I like on the show notes how uh, Jonathan put San Antonio FC at Jordan Farr. Cross, 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 cross. Tampa Bay <laughs> Rowdies. <laughs> Jonathan, you want to fill us in on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I... First of all, I just thought it would be funny to do that because the whole, like, every storyline starts with, oh, Jordan Farr, and, you know, there there was going to be a magnifying glass on his performance. Uh, there certainly was a lot of people saying, you know, oh, uh, you know, he, he messed up on SAFC's first goal, that kind of thing. Or uh, I, I think you actually went ahead and tweeted out something, Royce, um, along the lines of, like, Sistiego would have saved that. Uh, That's kind of poking fun at how last year with, Nick Marsman, people were saying, oh, far would have saved that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was very much the, the big storyline. And the US, you know, to the extent that the USL even did a little article about Jordan Farr and, you know, how he was actually, uh, it turns out, content to stick around in San Antonio, fight for the number one goal spot again. Allegedly. Um, yeah, I, I mean, sure, I guess. Um, I, I genuinely think he would have been willing to. I mean, he his his wife was here his uh, daughter was here like i'm sure they wanted some more longevity um but tampa bay a few teams turns out found out hey jordan may not be the the starting goalkeeper anymore he's on the market and tampa bay said yeah we'll we'll pay the money to bring him in he's a great goalkeeper we we think he'll add to our team and so he found his way over there um but 2-2 two, two draw, ultimately, uh, if you look at the scoreline, it's about par for the course with these two teams because three meetings in their history uh, since they both joined the USL Championship, and all three have been draws. Um, the way it got there, though, is a lot more interesting than it might seem. Uh, I don't know if we want to get into the, the goals. And oh, we will. That. We will. That's a great transition right there, uh, how interesting this match was. So we'll start it out. We'll talk about the injury report. Um, oddly enough, I did not get a, uh, a press release on that, but I guess Jonathan through the grapevine found it somehow. Uh, it's just the same as last. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plotting check over there. Uh, it's the same as last time Lucho's on it. It seems like a week to week injury. We'll see when he's available. Um, I don't think it's nothing really to worry about. Uh, and the second big news is. This was Mitch Tainer's 100th appearance for San Antonio FC. Once again, clap it up for the captain. Clap it up for a captain. Clap it up for a beautiful friend, Mitchell Tainer, for 100 appearances for San Antonio FC. Um, big, big salute uh, to Mitch. Um, 
well-deserved captain and man i guess we'll throw it around the horn uh robert what are your thoughts on mitchell tainer and his 100 100th good lord appearance for san antonio fc yeah what makes it massively impressive is the fact that this league tends to be one of transition where <laughs> players you know they always call it quote unquote minor league or they're trying to get onto bigger opportunities or they're kind of on the tail end of their career. So these types of things don't come along all the time. So definitely celebrate him. I mean, he's been ever since coming from Sacramento, uh, a mainstay, uh, fan favorite, great player, captain, MVP, all that good stuff. Absolutely. Um, Matthew, are you okay? He's I choked up. Dog. Talking about Tanner. Right. Yeah, that's. I have a needy dog. Fair enough. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Mitchell Tainer and his 100th appearance? Good Lord. Pretty amazing. I mean, he's what, the third player to do that? I believe so, yes. So, pretty amazing. Pretty, I'd just add more to SAFC's history. The other two being uh, Greg Cochran, correct? And uh, Cardoni has to be. My guy, Matt Cardone. <laughs> <Cardone's. laughs> yeah. 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 I know you can't see him back there, but he's back there with uh, Rafa <laughs> Castillo in my Ferrari cars. You you can only see, I guess we'll introduce it now. You see my James Bond cars all right there. Rita Zuhir, all my Funko Pops. Uh, Lars Ulrich over there off my shoulder. Eddie Belfour on my other shoulder. All right. Now you're introduced. Cool. We're there. <laughs> um, and let's go to Harry. Harry, uh, what are your thoughts on Mitchell and his century mark appearance? He's one of the goats. If there is ever a statue that's built, he has to be in that discussion of being one of the first ones to be built. Um, I know Rafa Castillo, you know, probably still probably the you know, fan favorite for his all time with uh, San Antonio FC, uh, but and 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 San Antonio Scorpions, Matt Cardoni, um, and then you know uh, has has to be Tanner. Uh, as far as top three, at least in my book, that would be in the discussion if uh, if if a statue was ever to be built, uh, to be the first. Or if we start retiring numbers, one or the other. Uh, you don't see that a lot in soccer, so but we'll see. Never especially, say never. Especially his number. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but th- I mean, then again, St. Louis Cardinals, uh, we have a lot of numbers retired, yeah. including pretty much 1 through 10 now is basically retired because Yachty's number 4 is going to get retired. Pujols' 5 is going to get retired. Musial 6, you know, Who Red Shindy's Cardinals, 2. Man. Anyway, I'm just saying. It's like, it's like for a- <laughs> talking about the Vikings, man. You know, last oh. place teams. No, no, no. This is our year. We're about to trade up. We're about to trade up. (laughs) Okay, Denver's not any better. Anyway, let's get back on track. Let's reconnoiter. Jonathan, what are your thoughts on Mitchell and his 100th appearance for SAFC? Yeah, first of all, I I was kind of uh, starting to doubt myself. I knew Mitch was supposed to be kind of close to 100 appearances based on what he had had in the previous seasons, but I was surprised SAFC wasn't really... Because he had... Because he has 90 yellow cards? Yeah, exactly. Anyway. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, I knew he'd be getting close, but SAFC wasn't saying anything. And then, you know, as he was in the starting lineup, they did the graphic. I'm like, okay, so I wasn't crazy. Good. Um, and it is 100 appearances in, in all competitions. Uh, and obviously, you know, he's played for other teams. So the, the appearance numbers get a little muddy there. Um, but yeah, he is definitely, I, I think, fitting to be on that pantheon of SAFC players who, you know, have given a lot to the club and have, uh, have all had kind of different journeys to a hundred appearances. You know, I, uh, at least when Matt Cardoni reached it a couple years ago, I was talking about how Greg Cochran played pretty much just every game of those three seasons. He was with SAFC and that got him to a hundred, uh, for Matt, it was, you know, kind of, riding a wave up and down you know sometimes he was the number one sometimes he got injured and you know then came back and was on the bench um and for mitch you know he did have some of that you know 
he he went back to Sacramento, uh, but for the most part, he he was actually I guess kind of a mix of Cardoni and Cochran because he's played most of the time he's been at SAFC, with the exception of a couple injuries and you know a yellow card suspension here and there. Um, but he it's it's also just really fitting that he was recently announced as the captain. You know, I wrote a little something about that earlier this week. Um, and I talked earlier about how you you thought maybe Jordan Farr was going to put down roots here. Mitch definitely has. You know, he's bought a house here thanks to his realtor and center back teammate, Carter Manley. Um, game uh, game tire, uh, yes, yes. Carter Manley. Yep. Match hero, uh, match that, hero. That, that too. We'll, we'll get <laughs> match to that. Hero. Um, but yeah, so it's it, it feels good. And he's just, you know, he, he really clicks with, I think SAFC, the community, uh, certainly with Marcina, you know, I've talked about that before that you have a great relationship. So a um, hundred and we'll see how many more. I think if he continues to play pretty much every game, he will become the SAFC appearance leader later this season. Wow. Absolutely. Which is pretty wild to think. Uh, number one. And number two, this just shows that big shift that happened when Alan Marcina came on board that San Antonio FC is doing is building the core. They're they're doing the multi-year contracts, they're keeping those players in for a long time that we were always asking for from out from 16 to 19, actually 16 to 20, really, is we wanted that core. We wanted a majority of the players to stay, and we're starting to see that. Um and we're continuing to see that. So I think that's a great thing. And uh, Mitchell wouldn't want anybody else to have this. He's a great dude and great player and great ambassador for the team. Absolutely. So uh, moving right along after the 100, uh, let's talk lineups. Harry, you want to cue that up? So in this lineup, it was basically the exact same as we saw in the first match the only change is instead of Saint Shana Gomez goes to the bench and Mo Amar Muhammad Omar uh, comes on uh, to start uh, what it kind of seems like and the formation we had was a 3-5-2 and kind of what it seemed like is uh, we really wanted to lock down that midfield so we put basically three um, three number sixes three uh, defensive midfielders in the middle to really lock down Tampa from doing anything and having them depend on the wings, which we'll get to. Um, but that's kind of what it seemed like Marcina wanted to do. Uh, was it successful? We'll talk about it, but that's kind of what it seemed like you wanted to do. Um, this is normally where I throw it to uh, uh, Rafa for some analysis, but Robert, how do you feel about the uh, three, five, two uh, in this iteration? I mean, the, uh, I guess the uh, results of the game were like the, the flow of the game kind of was not great for, the, I mean, for the first, like what, 80 minutes. So, I mean, they made some, t they, they were tinkering with it, brought in new players to kind of, you know, get some energy going, but it, it was the same general setup i think they're just trying to feel things out see what works what doesn't i mean marcina's known to tinker known to substitute known to try to modify each lineup based off who the opponent is so i mean it's it, it's a work in progress it's early in the season it's two games i mean we just got to be patient some things are going to work some aren't there's going to be some games that are great some that are not so much and and the reality is this season everyone knows that it's it's a marathon not not a not a sprint so it's just a matter of kind of finding what works, finding your, you know, players that click and don't, and then just keep going from there. Absolutely. Uh, Harry, you have any thoughts on the 3-5-2? I thought this lineup did a good job of shutting down the middle of the pitch. And I think is if we, you know, talk about execution, it put things out wide, which... You know, it, it caused some problems, we'll say, um, as we'll see, you know, in the uh, highlights here. But I thought for Coach Marcina, he wanted to kind of stabilize the middle um, with, with that, you know, six-pack there with Omar, Tainer, Abu, Burks, Lambert, Manley, um, with Hackinson and Silva going up and down and, and Agudelo and, and Hernandez through there. So, to me, Mike, you know, you know kind of at the start, I was like, uh, it's a change. 
Um, I'm excited to see Omar. I thought he played well the times that he's been in there. Um, still some work to do, uh, which you know is why we named this show Growing Pains Part 2, because um, as Robert mentioned, uh, I, I don't think Coach Marcina has landed on his optimal starting lineup yet. Um, one, because not everybody's here, not everybody's healthy, and, uh, you know, just a new system that he is working with. Go ahead, Royce. I will say one thing. Um, how many how many times did we use the same lineup during our championship year? Anybody? Was it like twice? Twice. Yeah. So don't expect a normal. That was due to injury, though. I'm just saying. Three. It may have been three. It, it may have been three. Uh, but once again, single digits, very low single digits. So there's going to be a lot of tinkering. It's, you know, it's not going to. Hello, JC. Welcome. Um, it, it's it's going to change. And Marcin is definitely one to tinker. Um, he's not, you know, he's not the tinkerer. But he, you know, there's certain things that he'll that he'll change. He'll adjust. Uh, and the one big thing in this match, uh, once we go over the highlights, uh, that I think he was a lot more successful at from the Loudon match to this match were his subs. I think his subs were a lot more successful in this one. Uh, you want to queue up the highlights? We'll go through them, and then we'll uh, we'll talk stats and uh, big events. And while this loads, I'll go ahead and talk over it, uh, and I'll stop. Well, I guess I got to talk over it anyway to explain what's going on. So here's the kickoff. Here's the opening whistle. Um, and we kick it around the back. <laughs> Here's the opening goal. Uh, it's a set piece goal in the fourth minute. And I'm four. four assists for the Rowdies in the preseason. He has been oh, and Tampa Bay is on the board here in the fourth. No well, tough could, play. Nothing Pablo can do, right? Uh, the, Robert. No, not yeah. at all. Not at all. That's class, class, class. But it's just poor marking, like. Yeah. Like someone didn't pick him up the run. Pick up the run in the front side there. Well, you can finish, yeah. Like, and that's what Pablo's saying right there is, how do we miss that mark? He's wide open, gets, you know, Mo doesn't even really jump with him. That's tough. And that's going to be something definitely to watch out for in future games is our set piece defense because it uh, it needs work. It, it that's needs a boo, work. right? It was a boo. Yeah, it was a boo's man that it, that got in front of him, got positioning, and got up to get the header on. And there's nothing Sisniga can do about that one. Zero. To be fair, if a booze on Jennings, that that's that's gonna be yeah, an L. That's L tough. Yeah. That's, that's tough. Good, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. That's tough. I think. I mean, you're yeah. looking at uh, Mo Amar right there in the middle, who's a lot taller, a lot more, uh, has a better aerial presence than Mo Abu. I think those guys should have switched. But once again, like I said, there's it's class. It's class. Don't get me wrong. It's it's class. It's a great header. It's early in the season. These are those bugs that need to be. Um, sorted out absolutely, and, and I'll already uh taint uh, Jonathan's check, uh, uh, you know, horn here, pat him okay. on his back because uh, he did mention that uh, watch out for Jennings and uh, four minutes into the match, he was throwing it back in our face, all, all so <laughs> humbly. Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> all right, let's continue. And that was definitely offside. Really good save by Cisniega. He needs to hold on to it, yeah. but the player was offside. Far would have held on to it. <laughs> oh gosh. Or or he would have completely missed it either one. Yeah, we're kind of defending for our lives here in this first half. Um we really didn't have a lot of outlet. There was really no offensive outlet for San Antonio oh, FC in the first, first half. First and we shot just, yeah, that was the first shot right there. Uh like I said, we didn't have a lot of outlet. It was a good save by Jordan. But we didn't have a lot of outlet, a lot, a lot of offensive outlet. That's kind of where that the sixes in the midfield kind of hampered us is we couldn't really play through them. We could stop 
plays, but we couldn't really play through them. So, so that was kind of difficult. We do have to talk about that's not on the highlights, but Jorge had a got a yellow card, um, but did have elbow to the head. Could have been could have been a red, um, you know, if 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 called on. Also, late in the first half, he also had another foul that um, the refs started to reach into his pocket and decided not to pull it out because he knew he saw the number and, and, and let it go. So this first half, there was, what, four yellows, three for the Rowdies, one for us. Four for and... the rowdy, Four for the Rowdies, one for us. And I will say that Jorge kind of was on the line but he kind of established the physicality in, yes. in that first play. But Tampa Bay answered, and they beat up Luke Hackinson in this match. So yes. yeah. whether and whether whether and whether Jorge. right, I mean they beat them both up absolutely. But that's kind of on the ref to not control that from the beginning. Uh, he let you know he established it with Jorge, and I agree with the yellow. It's probably orange. That's perfectly fine. But from there, Tampa had three or four fouls where they ran into uh, Hackinson late that he did not give a yellow, and then he finally started giving yellow cards. So it's kind of on the ref. He It's one of those things we see just a lot in soccer in general is where the ref will, oh, I'm stamping down on this. Here's a yellow. Next one, buddy, you're off. And then for some reason forgets that and just starts letting them play. So – one of those inconsistencies uh, that we see quite often, and we saw it in this match as well. But I just I did want to point it out because it is one that that San Antonio FC could have been shorthanded because we're going to talk about in the second half a a play where 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 San Antonio did get possibly an advantage. Um, with Luke once again. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the ad in the box. In the box. Yeah, yeah, no, it's. I mean, that it was pretty clear what that was. But at the same rate, like I said, there's. But there's, I did want there's to, players on we, both sides that probably yes. should not have stayed on the field. Sure. Correct, but I wanted since we're starting second half here, I did want to address yeah. that in you know in the uh, first half because that, right that that was for San Antonio FC a key moment of keeping. Uh, Jorge, number one on the field, but also not missing any games uh, if he would have got a red card. So. Absolutely. And we also will say that at the half, Cameron Lacey came on for Mo uh, Muhammad Amar. Um, Nobody knew. <laughs> showing to, yeah, yeah, it wasn't announced at all. But show, and you could see how easily Tampa Bay came up on the wings. You're going to see that later. Um, but what I will say about the switch between Lacey and Omar, that's um, nice. a really nice save. Uh, that's uh, Alamarcina seeing that while he has three defenders defending, you can't play, you know, you can't hold possession and play through that. And that's kind of what happened there is um, he needed more offense in the midfield. And so we brought Jorge back and put Lacey up as a second forward. Their breath here. And great, we have to give Tampa uh, credit. They did have a wonderful crowd here uh, for their opening match over 7,000. I'll call it a crowd. All right. Another nice save by Cisniega there. Who had another really nice match, I thought. And just, yeah. San Antonio playing upfield the entire way. Dangerous ball this time. Look out, it's Hernandez. He's back in place. Here's the shot. So uh, he wanted he wanted that back, you can tell. He went for yeah, instead of power, he went for placement. And here's the tough. This is just tough. That's what this is. This is this is Lucas Silva just overplaying and underplaying at the same time. Yes, really bad, really bad defending. Yeah, 
the goal scorer had the perfect timing over Manley. He was on his shoulder the whole time. Right when that pass went, he made his run. Not a lot Manley could do. He could have tried to block him a little bit more, but this one's on Silva for sure. Silva's got to stop that in the corner. He's got to kick that out of bounds at the very least. Burrow. And here comes Burrow. Yeah, this this was like a that. player. This was this a player I was super excited about. Is Burrow to see what he can do? Game changer. The game changed right there in the 82nd minute. When did he start, though? That's the question. FC Dallas, right? No, no. He's the guy from no, like, he was, Iran or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he was in the Persian Gulf League. <laughs> yeah. And that is a howitzer. And that is 100% on Jordan Farr there. Uh, watch Robert, the defense, defense, defense. You yeah. never get beat for the near post. If you want to talk about yeah. far, you Jordan never. Far, that's the number like one rule of goalkeeping. You always guard that post. That's yours. Just a strong post yeah. a near post is a sin in goalkeeping. No, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and that is near post, as near post gets. It, it caught him off guard. He put him in leaning, like, you know, waiting for the cross. And I was shocked to see Burr. Like, I was expecting him to be a defensive guy. But when I saw it, I was like, wow. He, he, you think he just offense. misjudged it because his arms right there? What you think it was no. just the speed or no? No, that's just not blocking your post. He's not close enough to the post. Yeah, he's not close there enough. He's and, leaning and more it, to the right than to. And it's got post. some heat on it too, but like still. <laughs> like as a as a hockey goal, I'm just trying, you have I'm to, just trying to defend far possibly. <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. That's your prerogative. Them. But as a you know as oh, a. Shit. Hold on, we got we got the number one goalkeeper uh, that it showed up just, here. There we go. Just hey, <laughs> going on straight from Hondo. I know. Well, <laughs> well if Walmart timing. Hondo's watching, they suck. So if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. Walmart, don't go to Walmart Honda, the Hondo Auto Center in Hondo. You suck. Uh, there goes there goes one possible sponsor. Uh Rafa, we're talking about the we're talking about the Burra goal that yeah. Jordan Farr let in in the near post. Can you kind of explain how that's how that's a sin in goalkeeping and what are your thoughts on his um on that uh that goal he allowed? It was basically what you saw last year. He was he was well discipline wise, he needs to be curving his near post, but you can tell he was cheating for the cross. So if you kind of see, you can see him kind of leaning once he gets close to the post, and he was leaning back. He need, he needs to cover his post and let his defenders worry about the cross. So yeah, that and that's probably what, you know we saw a lot of that last year. It's okay. So so all the supporters there that okay, there there's there's goalkeeping one on one. Cover your near post. He's there if he's on the post. That shot's blocked. Yeah, he's hugging. It's hitting. Him. He's got a defender it's right here too. <laughs> yeah, he's got a right defender right there to block the. If it's going to be crossed, that defender clears it away. So those are, those are the little details right there. Okay, moving right along, and that's Burra's first for the team. Welcome, Burra. The, the announcer said it was his first professional goal. Now I, I didn't that's, fact that's check that. Said, yeah. I don't think said. it's his first professional. Uh, I'll do some research real quick, but I don't think it's first professional. And here we go into stoppage time. A little magic from Hackinson right there. And here comes Carter Manley. Boom. Oh, my goodness. I scared my dog uh, cheering for this one. Wonderful. He erupted that animal for, with that goal. Carter Manley with the black. Yeah, that was. I mean, this is just this is just character. This is showing never say die. This is putting it all in. This is what you want to see out of your team right here. Is just that effort, put in that extra effort to at least get the tie on the road. Huge, huge. You want to pause it real quick? Oh, I know, I know. We'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, Rafa, uh, can you uh, kind of give us your analysis or your thoughts on the the game tying goal by Carter Manley? I mean, there no keeper can stop that shot. If you look at the how he where he placed that, it's it's a uh, you gotta give uh, kudos to Carl Manley to really place in that. You know, especially with the defender there near that post, he's, he's able to get it in. Like I said, Jordan Farr would. I don't care if it's Jordan Farr, Quatar, or <laughs> Ed, Ed, Ederson. I don't I don't care. Yeah, it's it's he, no one's gonna stop. No one's gonna stop that shot. 
and it was just so placed that, on yeah, a platter. Can, it was on a platter for him after Jorge missed right there. Like it's just on a and platter, that, and that's threading. <laughs> that's threading it right. That's threading yeah. it right there. Just look how tight that was. Yeah. Gillian, yeah. Another oh. mistake from last year. Oh, oh. Right, we saw go plenty forward. of. So according to Transfer Mart, that was his first professional goal. Yeah, all the highlights, he looks super defensive. Yeah. He looked almost like was. a junkyard dog. Like he was like literally like all over people defensively, but they didn't show the, any offensive highlights on him. Burra is built like a brick shit house. Have you seen <laughs> that looks, guy? Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, they 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 were talking about his tenacity and how much he's good on one on one challenges and he's unbelievable. Yeah. He is a he is a squad changer, that guy. I uh, he is going to start before long, and another man, tank. He is he's unbelievable, dude. Incredible. All right, Who continue. Does he start for does he start for Abu? I I think so. Uh, we know Abu's probably on a minutes limit, uh, and I think Abu may be kind of a closer um, coming up, kind of like PC was a closer uh, the last couple seasons. Um, I see Burra starting next to uh, Lambert and then having Jorge in front of him. I think that's going to be uh, a top choice. And then Mo Amar is going to kind of fill in as as needed. And uh, Burra can play a lot of different positions. This and this one, he was a right back um, or the right wing back. And he could play center uh, in the midfield and he could play as a, a full uh, center back as well. So. I mean, one of those real versatile guys that's super talented that San Antonio FC's scouting department did a really good job on. And then this was, oof, yeah, continue. Uh, Robert and Rafa, this I want to hear y'all. This to me is classic. This to me is part of the reason why Farr is not in San Antonio because he did this last year with SAFC. They will have to get offensive here. Pass in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. He got lucky. He got bailed out. Lasso bailed him out. Yeah, big time. Yeah, that was going in. Yeah, he did. That should have been. That should have been. It should have been three to two, and then this should have probably been. been, been uh, this probably should have been the game tying goal. Oh nope, they're not going to show it. All right, fair enough. No, they don't yeah, show they it. Didn't show oh, it. Don't show that. yeah. So what they don't show? I look for a replay all day. Fair enough. So what they don't show is uh, in stoppage time after that chance that uh, Jorge Hernandez had there uh, to win the game, well, almost win it, um, there was a long, deep cross that connected with Tampa Bay in the box. And Luke Hackinson, the um, the Tampa Bay winger, fake like he was going to cross. Luke Hackinson went to the air, which is a sin. You never go in the air defending in the box. Tampa Bay player just stopped and Hackinson clattered into him and knocked him over and it should have been a penalty. Absolutely should have. Uh, it wasn't called. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Also, I'll, I'll take it. Also, there was, wasn't there a corner that San Antonio scored on as well that uh, I still yeah, don't know what the call was. The uh, I yeah. don't know if it was a foul game. offsides or what. San Antonio uh, put the ball in the net. They put the ball in the net, and it was called either offside or for a fa- – it was either called offside as in the ball went over the inline or there was a foul. Not sure what happened. Nothing was obvious, but it was called, and it was negated. So, shrug. So, San Antonio really came in with a vengeance. Uh, for me, this is a big character game that they showed a lot of character. They went down 2 nothing away. In a very against a very tough opponent, they came away with a point. They almost came away with three. Um, I think it was a great result. Let's throw it around the horn to see everybody's uh, opinion of the result. Uh, Matt, you look real tuned in. Uh, what's your opinion on the uh, on the result? My bad. Uh, what do you call it? This it's pretty good, man. I mean, I think it was like we've been talking about. We have to. Either, it was either a draw or a win for this game. That's how I saw it. We either had to get a, a draw or a win to show, hey, we, we're going to contend this year. Um, obviously, it's, I, I personally feel it should have done a win, but I think 
seeing the new tactics that Marcina and the new sporting director are doing for Fariza, Fariza, Fariza. Uh, I can never pronounce it. Faruzi, Faruzi. So the new tactics that they're coming with, I think they're they look a lot better um, going forward. So let's just see how much uh, more chemistry we can get out of these guys and see if uh, what happens. And that's exactly why we call the episode Growing Pains Part 2. I wanted to be called Electric Boogaloo, but I got voted out of that one and never say die one. So, um, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Never say die. It's fine. It's fine. Your James Bond theme, because I think that's one of the movies. Uh, no, it's no. Never say, it's never say never again. And it's not an official Bond movie that was done by anyway. I can go through the whole story. Okay, Justin not an official Bieber. Bond, but anyway, this is you, Sean Connery. You can call, you Sean can call it far too many ties. <laughs> no, that sure. Was, well, we'll sure. talk about that here in the preview. Of, uh, uh, yeah. right. So far, far let me con- let me continue with throwing around the horn, Robert. How did you feel about the result? I mean, it's one of those ties that feels like a win, you know. We're not, and it was opposite of it's. It's funny. It was like the polar opposite of last week, where the tie felt like a loss. So, I mean, it's kind of the ebbs and flows of the season. And weird how that biggest, happens, right? It has, my biggest takeaway is the Burr Burr experience. I mean, seeing him, seeing him finally play. I mean, to me, it gave me excitement about you know what he can bring to the table long term. Against Antigua, grain of salt. It was against Antigua. But when he was out there alongside, um, I think, it, no, it wasn't Mo Amar. Who it was, was Omar. It was Omar. It, it was, was Omar. It was Mo Amar, right? Um, those two just bossed that game as the two center backs with all of the academy kids. Like, nothing went through them. They were unbelievable. And to watch those two players who probably trained two or three times together, how they just – how they – had everybody set up in the academy, clear instructions. Everybody knew what to do. Went over, talked to the kids. You know, there are a couple times the kids got a little amped up and were pretty close to getting a yellow and a friendly. And, you know, Burrow would go over and be like, hey, we need to settle down. We got this. We're up to nothing. We're fine. We got this. That's right, because Mo Amar scored the second goal. So you're right. He was in there. Um, but the dude's all class, and he's an unbelievable footballer. And I, I'm so excited to have him on my team for sure. Uh, Rafa, what are your – your thoughts on the uh, um, two to two draw at Tampa? Well, it's good for them. They are able to steal points from one of the top teams from the East, especially on the road. Um, should be at four points, but that's a whole other story. But you know, I think I think the biggest thing is you know they showed some character. They didn't quit. They fought. They were good to equalize and really also kind of miss uh, unlucky on not getting the the winning goals, but it just shows that hopefully maybe this is a, a, a sign that they're turning the leaf and better things are, are, are yet to come. And, and they can, like I said, this is a confidence booster for that squad. And hopefully we can, they can build upon that next week against Colorado. We're still the mentality monsters, baby. Don't forget it. Uh, JC, what are your thoughts on the uh, two, two draw? Yeah. So I think the, particularly given the circumstances of this being, you know, playing away to Tampa Bay in their season opener, no less, uh, it was always going to be a tough match. And I, I'm going to forego echoing some things you guys have said. The The thing that I came away from last night was thinking this felt like maybe an SAFC away win from 2022, where they maybe look uh, kind of on the back foot or second best for a large portion of the match. And then all of a sudden they, pull something out of uh, a certain bodily orifice at the end, uh, maybe even, you know, could have grabbed a win, uh, which you kind of shrug and say, okay, well, maybe based on the balance of play, they didn't quite deserve that. But you take it, obviously, you can't complain, especially if you're on, you know, in the SAFC camp. Um, now, I think the caveat to that is if SAFC got a win under those kinds of circumstances, that's kind of reverting back to the old style. And so then you're, you're kind of balancing, okay, well, you know, we got the win, but we did it in the, like this style, this fashion that we were kind of trying to move on from. So it becomes uh, a bit of a, I guess, kind of a catch 22 there. Like, is it, you know, it's, it's a little good, a little bad. Um, I don't know if we want to get into the, the Alan Marcina quote either. Um, 
like right now or, or later on. Okay, so not much in terms of post game quotes uh, because this is a, an SAFC away game. You know, we we don't get to do any of that. But Marcina said something after the match, and I'm I, I almost want to just if if anyone has any particular reaction to this, I want to know. Um, I do, I do, but yeah. go ahead. So Alan Marcina said, "Quote." I felt we were robbed of three points with that unfortunate disallowed goal right at the end. And I saw that and it was a real head scratcher for me because it would be one thing to say, you know, I, I thought we were unfortunate or I thought we were unlucky yeah. Yeah. To, to get a win um, or, you know, to not get a win because obviously again, you know, that, that would have been just pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Um, I think a draw was probably a fair result, but to, to say we were robbed is a little weird to me because that kind of implies that, oh yeah, based on the balance of play, we deserved a win and we should have gotten all three points. And I don't know if there's anyone here who would raise their hand and say, yeah, I think SAFC was the better team and should have won that match. Really? Really, really Matt? Really? Oh, no. <laughs> really? No, I, oh, well, 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 hold in on. In the last 15 minutes, maybe. <laughs> that's yeah. the key, though. That's, that's, that's the key. Yeah, in the last 15 minutes, sure. Four, but based on the entirety of the match, you look at that oh, and say, absolutely I not, don't yeah. know that they should have won that. But the so, Rowdies didn't take advantage of all the opportunities that they had. They left the door open. Um... You know, but they did pull. They did pull a rabbit out of their ass, or however you wanted to say it, because it's true. That they were gonna that game, see, and I just went off Here, go ahead. five more minutes. San Antonio wins that game straight up. Um, but let me let me do mine, and then we can circle back because it'll it'll kind of, kind of go back to this. Fire away, uh, and then I'll, I'll respond to the quote. But Harry, I left you out. You give your go ahead. Uh, hold on, let me. So stat wise here. Um, so 60 40 in possession. Yeah, I, I, I will say real quick to the 60 and 40 in possession. That was because the majority of the game, San Antonio FC was behind, so they needed to take the impetus to try to tie it. So that's kind of skewed a little bit. They went down in the fourth minute. That's kind of where that comes from, that 60 40. I think it would have been closer to 50 50 had it gone tied for a lot longer. But go ahead. So 60-40 possession, um, the Rowdies had four, uh, 14 shots, we had seven. We had seven on target, we had four. Um, we had two block shots, they had four. Um, they had 11 corner kicks, we had three, and ours were, ours were late. 16-15 um, fouls, four and three, you know, so it was, it was a fairly physical game. Uh, passing wise, 398 passes, pretty even between the two halves. A passing accuracy level of 73 percent, even on long balls, 24 of 56 for 43. Uh, through there here, so to me, like I said here, and the reason why I bring that up is I put this tweet out when we were still losing, um, saying that you know, for San Antonio FC, not reverting to their old super direct style is a huge positive for this match. Um, is going against Tampa was always going to be tough. Um, but while the game's not going ahead or one, but to, you can see the improvement that they are wanting to do. And then, of course, um, you know, they, they turned it on in the last 10 minutes. But uh, to me, to me, it's it, it's 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 all about the keeping to the new system and not you know reverting back to the old one. I agree. And so there's two points I wanted to make. The number one point is the only thing that matters is the score. The scoreboard you could have said last season or maybe even the season before san antonio fc didn't really deserve to win a lot of those games because of a lot of them they didn't have the majority of the possession most of them they didn't have the majority of the possession but we had the majority of the chances we had the majority of the goals we had the majority of uh chances uh in the entire league it was ugly soccer but it was direct and it worked it was effective but a lot of people would disagree with that now we're trying to go with more chance creation, more possession. Um, and what we saw was plan A and plan B. We uh, Last year and the year before and the year before that, we had one plan that was plan A and plan A was hoof it long and create chances that way. Get two athletes up top that'll create chances. Now with plan, plan A is the possession style, try to move the ball back and forth. 
get some lanes open, find those lanes and play through, which we saw a lot of against Loudon, and it was really effective. In this match, because instead of having Jorge as that uh, tip of the midfield, we just had three sixes uh, or three defensive midfielders, it was really tough to get those triangle passes together to play out. And we just had the two forwards, and they were kind of on an island by themselves to the point where uh, Agadello was by himself because the two forwards were Agadello and Jorge Hernandez. And, and Hernandez would tuck underneath um, Agadello to try to support him. So Agadello was by himself against uh, against the back line of the Rowdies. And it was, just, it was tough for him all night. He couldn't really hold the ball up too well because he had at least two guys on him. And it was tough for him. So plan A in this instance with three defensive midfielders, was tough. It didn't really work. Couldn't get a lot uh, going. And as we saw in the highlights, the first shot, the first chance we created was what in the 42nd, 43rd minute. So kind of tough on that part. But what that gives us is now we have a plan B plan B now is our old plan a, and we saw a lot of that in the second half after we went down to nothing and we needed to chase a goal, and that completely opened up the field because what Tampa had was they were set up to defend against our plan A. They didn't have any they didn't have anything again, uh, for us for plan B, and we went high up the wings, and then we'd work it back in, and that's kind of why they got their second goal is Lucas Silva was up high. He got caught, poor defending, yada, yada. It's going to happen, but we went up high on the wings. Tampa Bay didn't really have an answer for that, and then we brought it back in the middle and we scored two goals from it. So um, is it, did we deserve to win? What's deserved? What it's what the scoreboard shows. It's where the ball goes. It's where the ball ends up. You could score three goals in three minutes and that's it. And then, you know, then sure you deserve to win because you put the ball in the net. So uh, is it deserved? I think it's deserved. And one of the things that I will say that, um, in my opinion, my humble opinion, that I thought one of the best parts of the game, like I said, we saw the plan A and plan B work to almost perfection. We almost won that game. But Alan Marcina's subs were top, were just on point. Um, against Loudon, not so much. But I think him, he and his coaching staff really learned a lot from that. Uh, for the subs, I think every one of the subs was effective in the way it should have been, and I think it worked out really well. Uh, Jonathan, do you have any thoughts on my opinion? Do you want to shoot everything I just said down? Please do it now. I, I mean, I'm sure you saw me making some some faces in there. It's still, like you said, you know, this this whole, the old plan A is the new plan B, and again, you know, it, it works sometimes. If you get a win, great, or, you know, even in this case, if you pull a result out of your hat, okay, great. But don't count on that to work every time necessarily. And something else is part of why we saw so much sort of rotation, not, not even rotation, um, kind of cleaning out the house uh, and getting a lot of new players in this season is because SAFC wanted to have this new style and have all these players that Marcina thought fit it better. So if you're going to have to revert to that old style, sometimes are they going to be as well suited to that? And I mean, it almost worked out last night. Uh, but like I said, it's not always going to happen. And I, again, you take a win if you can get it, but it just feels weird sometimes when it's like, okay, you sat back, uh, not, not even sat back. You were kind of the second best team. And then, you decided you were going to play and, and actually be the dominant team for the last 10, 15 minutes. And then suddenly, there you go. You you have a result. It just feels weird to me. Don't count on it to happen every time. Yeah, I, sure. I mean, scoreboard's the only thing that matters for me. So it is what it is. I, I, I respect your opinion. I don't agree with it. I think, you know, the result is what's on the scoreboard. So however you get there, that's how you get there. So, and I've, I've learned to love the system in the last, what, three or four years. We're changing it up a little bit. We're trying to become more diverse and I support it. And it's just part of the growing pains that we're going through. Um, let's see. Let's 
yeah um i guess that's all we got there when we come back we'll uh take it around the horn to usl championship uh results for this week And we're back here. And just a quick recap of where we're at. Uh, week two of USL Championship. El Paso uh, lost at home uh, to Louisville City, 1-0. Loudon, who we tied last week, got an impressive 3-1 win against North Carolina. Indy took care of Memphis, although there were two red cards against Memphis and one was early. Uh, Indy was up 2-0 and then kind of coasted in the second half. Rhode Island and the Poles <laughs> uh, drew New Mexico United, but a good uh, good result for Rhode Island and, and uh, looked like a great crowd uh, for there here. The TV viewing, uh, very San Diego-ish, very high. And then, of course, the, the goals are the it's on the far sides, each one. They got a pole in it, so probably still some work they need to do. Sacramento eked out a win in Miami, uh, 1-0. Orange County got by uh, Pittsburgh 2-0 in the home opener for Pittsburgh. Uh, Colorado Springs, Detroit City um, went into Colorado Springs after they cleaned out the stadium with the snow, 1-2-1. There's a red card, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, Tulsa rolled the lights. The uh, lights still haven't uh, figured out how to turn it on yet. Oakland Roots and Charleston Battery 1-1 one, one, um, in Oakland. And probably the upset of the night, Monterey Bay won. Phoenix Rising zero. Uh, Phoenix Rising, the defending champions, still have not won. So, looking at your standings, Loudon United uh, four points. Real, to real oh, quick, real quick, real quick. There's one other game on Wednesday, and that was Monterey Bay uh, drawing with El Paso in El Paso, and technically that was week two. So that was still this week. El Paso has played their first three games of the season in seven days. That's tough on them for sure, um, but. That and goes that's along with these results as well. That's due to their stadium to get their games in before uh, before the baseball starts. Uh, but, uh, you know, out east, too early to code playoff teams as of yet because we're two weeks in. Uh, Loud United, uh, four points, then followed by Detroit City, Miami, Birmingham, Hartford, Louisville, Indy, uh, Charleston Battery, two draws like we are in eighth place, the Rowdies with one point, the Rhode Island with one point. North Carolina, 1.2. Um, out West, Orange County, pretty impressive on the road at Pittsburgh. A draw against Sacramento, so first, Oakland Roots, Sacramento, Monterey Bay, New Mexico United, all at four points. Tulsa, uh, Memphis at three, San Antonio at two, El Paso at one, but in three matches played. Uh, Rising Lights and the Switchbacks, who we face this week, 0-2. And uh, leaking goals like crazy, uh, which I'm assuming we'll talk about here uh, real quick here. So any thoughts on the standings? I know it's week two. Uh, any games that stood out to you at all this week that you watched or that you uh, caught the highlights of? I think it's too early to really standings watch as of now. Although if you're hairy, I'm sure you're looking at it and panicking already. Um, I didn't but... say that. Dude, I, uh, okay. I have been calm. Telling people to calm down. You know what? Relax. You know what? You know what? You're, the one, you're the one trolling people with your little far tweet. I was like, hey, <laughs> even though we were behind 2-0, hey, calm down. There's a lot of positives on here, so I don't want to hear it. That's fair. You know what? That's fair. That's very fair. You've been you've been you've been better. You've been better. It's good. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for that. Anybody else have thoughts on the early matches so far? Early results? I guess the big ones that stand out to me are like uh, Loudon. Like it's not your mom and dad's Loudon from olden days. Now, now they might be actually a decent team in that tie. May not look as you know poor in the long run, but and and then uh, Detroit too. Like actually, Detroit scoring two goals was a very uncommon thing last year. So them putting it to Colorado, and I know eventually we'll transition to it. But then Colorado losing two games back to back. Like they put in a lot of time, money, and effort into the off season then. The results just aren't showing. Granted, like we always talk about, it's just two games in. Things change. People change. Like the teams all of a sudden catch a, catch a heater like last year, and then, you know, 
make the playoffs and then figure it out from there. But those things kind of stood out to me. And it was cool to see the, the, the Rhode Island New Mexico game just for, like Harry said, <laughs> other than the pole cam, you know, that was, <laughs> that was a little annoying when you were watching that game live, but it, it was a good atmosphere. It looked like uh, one more club. And then, you know, it's just promising for the USL, you know, for the future of the, the league. So. Absolutely. Uh, and I will say the surprises so far, uh, Matt, go ahead. Are we going to talk about Brooklyn coming in? Uh, well, another show. Okay. Not right yeah. now. Another show. We're already an hour in. No, sir. No, sir. Final, final thought, buddy. Come on. Yeah. Um, but real quick, uh, I think the surprises so far with form and, and how they looked are definitely loud in Detroit, um, Birmingham and Miami. It's one game for Detroit against Colorado Springs. Right, right. But th that's your top four in the East right now. I'm just saying that's a little bit of a surprise. Um, at the same rate, Monterey Bay's looked really good. Memphis has looked decent and Tulsa's looked pretty good. So that's interesting uh, so far. Um, and we're going to transition now to uh, – Upcoming match on Saturday, Colorado Springs comes into town in the Toyota Field. Uh, and as Harry said, there was a red card in the last match. They will be without their starting right back. Um, so we'll see who they throw in there. That'll be interesting. Uh, that's going to be the side that uh, Lucas Silva attacks. So No, it's the other side. No, it's the right back. Lucas Silva's on the left, and it's their right, it's their right back that got the red card oh uh, well how, how they had it lined up here so i have duke lacrosse moving over to well, i guess the the well, on my right side uh matthew mahoney uh slides out uh, for the hair you can flip them over it well it was uh, coa it was coa santos that got the red correct he's not on this here because he's he's sitting um right. pierre and then i added james musa because he's a center back they do have Tyreek McGee and Aiden Rocha that could also fill in if they did not want to move Matthew Mahoney out, but he's their captain. He has played um, out in the fullback position quite a bit. To me, what's interesting with Colorado Springs, Speedy Williams as a, as a DM, historically he's more up top, and, and by his name he is a fast player. Jonas Freiberg, which we know from RGV, Steven Echeverria, uh, Enriquez, Foster, and Ronaldo Damo. So this team has speed up, you know, in, in this what six, you know, this what this is a, what, uh, four one four one. So four one four one, yeah. So to me, Speedy Williams is, is kind of the interesting one here where he's not very defensive in my opinion, which might be why they're having some problems uh allowing goals. This is how we lined up initially. Um uh, in you know against Tampa, do you expect changes? I don't expect the same lineup. Jonathan, do you expect changes? Yeah, I, I certainly expect changes. Uh, for one, I think I don't really think I got a, a chance to say this earlier, but perhaps the more defensive formation and lineup and all that in Tampa was just playing obviously on the road at Tampa, but also just not necessarily knowing what you were going to get from them. Um, you're not going to be in that situation going into this match against Colorado Springs. You're playing at home. You're playing against a team that is obviously still kind of trying to figure out what it's doing. Um, wouldn't be surprised if we see something similar to the first match where it's you, you've got three players up top. Uh, you're not committing too much in that central defensive midfield area. Um, I mean, I think SAFC showed in this last match that if you focus too much on that, you just don't, you you hit a wall there. You don't have a way to get forward, to move the ball forward. And then once you finally put guys like Cameron Lacey in, uh, you create that link, you create a natural flow forward. And so it will be probably more back to that kind of lineup um, because it's, it's what's worked best for SAFC so far. I will say there will be one big change that is for certain that's going to happen is Luke Hackinson is most likely going to play as the right wing back. Shannon Gomez is going to be gone. He will be on international duty with Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, so that is going to be a change that we have for sure. Do um, you think Lacey or Mulatto starts? I don't know. We'll see if Lucho's healthy. I don't know. That's a great question. We're going to find out. Do you, do you think maybe... Burrus starts in, in place of say, Abu 
for because of the speed. Or or Burra is going to start on as a the right uh, wing back. That's also possible. We'll see. It's going to be a different lineup. That's all I can guarantee. So it will definitely be a unique lineup to this season. It will not be the same as the first or second game. Or maybe, or, or maybe Carter Manley plays there in the wing and Burrow plays in the back. That's very possible as well. That is very possible as well. So I just know it's going to be different. So we'll see what it is. I'm sure in training they'll discuss it and they'll figure it out. So maybe Jonathan will give us some insight. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't scout against. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, Colorado Springs right now has a negative three goal differential already in the early season. San Antonio FC has a zero goal differential um, early in the season, and Colorado Springs has kind of looked rough. So we'll see if they put it together against us. We'll see if we're able to put it get together against them. It's early in the season. We'll see who's who, um, and hopefully we get a good result uh, from this match. Um, so. I think that's pretty much going to do it. Um, anybody else? Harry, you have anything to add? No, because I know we're going to be sensitive with time here. Um, so uh, the only thing, you know, we won't talk about the the struggles at home. You know, that may be next week, if depending on how this result uh, takes place here. But uh, my final thoughts is um, go out, sports team. Um, like I said here, you know, if you have the opportunity to go down to the bunker, fun time. Uh, Matt, Robert will uh, take good care of you. Uh, Crocketeers will take care of you. Stuart uh, with uh, 210 Alliance and, of course, Matt with FTC. Um, and a lot of great play people down there like Jason uh, will, will take care of you. Uh, Max, I believe, is going to be here for his last, uh, last time this year, so... Uh, uh, if you get an opportunity, whether it's tailgate or at the stadium, go say hi to Max and, and thank him and his family for the service that they do provide this great nation uh, before he heads back over to Germany uh, for until he gets his next tour of duty station, which uh, we'll wait for him to announce. Uh, but uh, I know where that is um, for that here. So I'm doing my little J check, but I can't say anything because I'll get a, a red dot. And with his red dot, it's a little bit more serious than that. Then Jonathan Dread Doc. So uh, for that here, but uh, that's my final thought. Um, next week, uh, we'll 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 kind of play it by ear. It is bracketology season, high school playoffs. Uh, I am uh, just uh, getting brackets and stuff ready for it. Rafa is doing his research uh, to see who he's going to pick, um, and Rafa will be able to go into a little bit more details on that, but. Uh, for our channel here, uh, like I said here, expect a lot of high school action to come out in the next week uh, with the UIL playoffs starting. It. And like I said here, if you can tune in and like and help spread the word, it helps us out a lot uh, when it comes to that. And obviously, if you can like and subscribe uh, to you know our channels on YouTube and hit the like button and you know uh, whatever podcast of choice it gives you a rating, help us out on getting the. Uh, SAFC fan cast and the SA soccer round table out there for there, but that's it for me. Uh, Matt, you can go next and, and you can talk about uh, your beastie boys. What do you mean by beastie boys? Well, dude, Houston won. The Manchester game was great. Dude, and, this, this isn't, hey, you know, hey, international saying, time. Hey, hey, like, this is my final time, man. I'm just happy all my teams did good. That's all I gotta say. I'm glad they all did good. The Alamo did uh, at Alamo Beer was amazing. Great atmosphere. Uh, finally got to meet Spurs Nandez, so that was that was something pretty cool. And then uh, of course Steph Mejia came out also. So those two uh, sh showing it off uh, what the supporters are or what we do. Um, better yet, come out hang with us this next tailgate. Uh, I think uh, we'll throw out the menu sometime this week. But, uh, yeah, come out, join us, join us in the bunker. Like I said, uh, have fun with us. And just a reminder, this week is uh, the theme, the promotion for the game is Women's Empowerment Night. So pretty exciting. Uh, I'm excited. It's a new promotion. We'll see what what's all included in it. But I think it's 
it's it's a, it's a really princes, cool thing. Meet the princes as well. So if you have a young daughter, absolutely. That's in that wants to meet princesses. Uh, Matt, Rafa, you might be able to meet a princess too. Just saying. Uh, I had Rafa, mine at the, at the Alamo. So I'm uh, good. Rafa, what are your God? Way to bring the show down at the end. Rafa, what are your final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts, like I said, um, I'm going to say good, good bounce back, I guess, from last week's disappointment. So kudos to the SAMC. Um, like mentioned, Harry mentioned, bracketology is coming up. Um, often imitated and never duplicated. The only live bracketology for the UIL. Maybe you have other ones trying to be wannabes. Nope, this is the real deal. Us, Coach Cano, uh, Coach uh, Sanchez from the 5050 podcast. Like I said, we're, we're going to we have something special, something a little different, um, maybe something after the SAFC game. Stay tuned. Uh, but you'll see some of the posts that we're doing uh, on, on all our social media pages. And then also, I think, well, I think me and Harry will have a show, I think, Thursday. We're supposed to release some RPIs, but actually this is kind of good because this is the final RPIs for the regular season before the fall. So I'll have that ready to go. And I'll also give a little preview of what, what, what's coming up and – uh, should be covering, I think, a couple of games. I think Tuesday I might be at, um, I think at Somerset. It's for the Somerset Pearsall game. Uh, Coach uh, Coach over there invited me over there, so I so said, let's so let's do this. We'll, we'll we'll finish the season with you guys, and then maybe a, maybe a Wednesday game. I think me and Matt talked about maybe going to see a, a Wednesday game. So we'll, we'll keep you guys posted. And Robert, your final thoughts. I mean, the big thing, like, uh, with this game, we need to kind of take advantage of the fact that we're playing a team that's reeling. Like, we need to – I'm not going to channel my inner hair and go full panic mode, but we need to win. Like, we need to put the two of them. We need to pick up the three points. I don't want to I don't want to be at the end of the year saying, hey, you remember that 3-3 tie with San Diego that hurt us? And then the one year when we got to the sixth tiebreaker against OC, didn't host a, a home playoff game. So just, just put it to them. Let's score. Let's get some momentum bring the heat in the bunker. And unfortunately I won't be there on a few others, but we're going to be heading up to uh Watts USA on Thursday and Sunday, hopefully bring home the cup. So <laughs> or off a shake your head all you want. It's happening. And, and I don't want to, <laughs> the big thing I don't want is I don't want to go Thursday and then end up in the third place game. So it's not happening. We're, we're getting in the first place game, mark the tape, mark the video, mark whatever you want. We got this. Fair enough. Uh, Jonathan, your final thoughts. Yeah, building off of that, uh, I don't know that I really said it during the Colorado Springs preview, but uh, after kind of some weird circumstances in the SAFC season opener and then a tough match in Tampa Bay that SAFC managed to rescue a result in, you should be able to, especially at home, beat this switchbacks team that is going to be missing a right back, is, has not had a good start to the season. Um, this is where you start stamping your authority and showing, okay, yeah, we are a serious contender. Um, and again, going back to the theme, Women's Empowerment Night, I, I've been saying for a couple of years now, SAFC needs to kind of change this up a bit, get some new things. And so I'm really glad that they're going to be doing that. Uh, I'm excited to see how that turns out. And at the encouragement of you guys, um, you, you were also telling me to kind of promote my stuff. Um, I will not have an article out early this week. It's just not going to happen, especially with the way I've been feeling the last few days. But uh, bluishmoonblog.wordpress.com, there's been some uh, apparently good stuff out there. And I say that not because I think it necessarily, but because other people have told me, um, you know, a few different people on social media the last few days. And I just want to say that I appreciate that because uh, sometimes I, I kind of look in the mirror and wonder like, okay, where's this going? You know, why am I doing this? Um, so it, it does help just to hear that people do find value in it, that I'm not just uh, doing, you know, work that is, that can be found elsewhere that uh, isn't really rising above. It's, it's good to hear that it does actually make a difference for some people. So. And I will say costless. Yeah. You're, you're reverting to your RGV days. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this that's that's not allowed. Sorry. <clears throat> no, sir. No, sir. Uh strike one. Strike one, costless. No, joking. Uh and JC, your work is wonderful. Um, don't sell yourself short. It's it's needed in the community. It's needed for us. It's wonderful. Uh and my final thought, 
uh, once again, um, we got three weeks until the charity barbecue, the Mike Taylor barbecue cook-off fundraiser for the boys and girls clubs, um, uh, Salvation Army. They're off Peacock Avenue. Uh, once again, $25 for a VIP entry. You go in, you get um, free samples of barbecue, uh, get a get a plate, get a t-shirt. It's, it's a good time. Or you could just do a $10 drive through plate. Comes with rice, beans, sausage, chicken. Um, cook there on site. So uh, it's just it's a heck of a deal for lunch, and it's all to a, a good cause. Uh, for more information, go to SalvationArmySATX.org, and you can uh, purchase your tickets there. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, and for Harry at Raymond Call, for Jonathan at J at Check J Footy on Twitter. For Matthew at Nessio Drummer, for Robert at Viking Bob sixty nine, for Rafa at Papa underscore Socceritis Sicaritis, I guess that's what's supposed to be, and for me Royce at Royce the Voice, um, with zeros being the O's. Um, what's up with our goals? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you.